Hello my dear friends, I welcome you all to our channel which is Best Notes Tutorials. So in this video, we are going to learn about John Keats. As we all know that John Keats belongs to Romantic period and uh, the poetry that he has written in this time frame is very sensuous. So let's see what he wants to convey through poetries. And today we are going to take up only one poetry so that we can understand it in detailed manner. Okay, so let's begin with the class. Friends, before starting my class, let me tell you one information and that is regarding our courses. You can contact Cossack Sir with this number if you want to get access to all these notes. Apart from these, we have many more. So whatever you want, you please contact us and then you can ask for the information. Okay, so let's continue with today's class now. Today we will cover John Keats Poetry to Autumn John Keats was born in the year 1795 and he died on 1821. At very short time period, for a very short time period, he was there on earth. But in this very short time span, he has given us a lot of expensive poetries which we still read and get enchanted. So let's read about his biography. John Keats belonged to English Romantic period and he belonged to second generation. And uh, if I talk about Romantic period, it means being closer to nature. Okay, it, it's, it does not have to deal with love affairs, having, uh, you know, girlfriend, boyfriend, this, that, but it means going back to nature. According to romantic poets, whatever problem human beings are facing at present, they should go to nature to get its solutions. Like, <coughs> excuse me, uh, at present, we have lots of problems like depression, disappointments, challenges, then sadness, sadness because of lack in, uh, you know, warmth in relationship, lack in uh, cooperative world, lack of cooperation in cooperative world, lack of sympathy towards each other, which a human being should have. Okay, so in order to get cure, we should go back to nature and we should learn from it because nature teaches us human values, how to be selfless, how to be, you know, warm, how to be through mountain we learn how to be stable through sunshine we learn how to be selfless and do for others okay apart from that uh, you know to cure others problem this is the main thing that we learn from nature so poets wanted us poet wanted us all the human beings to go back to nature and in the first generation we find uh, William Blake William Wordsworth and then uh, S.T. Coleridge Okay, whereas in the second generation, we find Lord Byron, P.B. Shelley, and then our poet of today's class, that is John Keats. So, he belongs to second generation of Romantic period. Okay, he was born in Moorgate, London. This is a place in London where he was born. Initially, he was a medical student at Guy's Hospital. But because of lack of interest, he left that profession and he became a full-fledged poet. His first poem, An Imitation of a Spencer, was published in the year 1814. This poetry earned him reputation and it became very famous. And this was, this particular poetry was inspired by Leigh Hunt and Byron. Okay, he, both of them were his uh, friends and he got inspired from both of them. His friend Charles Cowder Clark was very intimate friend who was there with him in his ups and downs. Okay, but unfortunately he died of a trivial disease and that is tuberculosis. Right now we have 
proper medica uh, proper hospitals proper medication system because of which we can cure even cancer which is the deadliest disease right but because of lack of now let's move towards his important poetries his important work includes ode to sorry ode of odes of keats ode on melancholy ode to a nightingale ode to psyche ode on a gracian urn ode to autumn ode to indolence and solitude and demion the eve of saint agnes lamia isabella la bella dante sans mercy it's a ballad so ode means a lyrical poem which has a musical effect okay so he was master on that because he has written a lot of ode now here we will discuss about ode to autumn okay this is written by this is a poetry which is written by john keats a popular romantic poet to autumn is a phenomenon ode that celebrates the beauty and grandeur of the autumn season now see what do you understand by grandeur grandeur means magnificence or splendid something which is extraordinarily beautiful okay you are not able to express how beautiful it is okay so such kind of things are called grandeur so he is talking about autumn autumn is something which can be compared with grandeur okay how he compares it let's see the poet published this poetry in the year 1819 the poem explores the phenomenon of the fall season appreciatively now see what happens there are four seasons in the nature and when autumn arrives during september uh, october uh, these two particularly these two months okay so what happens it starts shedding its leaves the plants in the nature starts shedding its bearings okay so even that phenomenon even that process is shown in a grandeur way okay it means even in death there is grandeur it means unless and until old goes new cannot get generated okay so unless and until we give priority to death we will not be able to enjoy new life from that very branch okay so this process goes in nature its popularity lies in the representation of many things related to life and nature as i told you that unless and until we enjoy death or we appreciate death we will not be able to enjoy new bonds okay like if we keep on you know stagnating ourselves in the old age then what will happen beyond old age what is there we will not be able to experience or explore therefore we need to taste death as well be it human being and be it nature okay nature represents everything it could be tree it could be flower it could be plant it could be even um, inanimate things like rock mud anything okay everything in the nature has life and we should appreciate its birth and its death as well so here we are going to talk about autumn okay let's move towards the summary summary the poem explores the beauty of autumn in three different stages now see autumn season which is a part of nature it is beautified or its beauty is explained in three stages first autumn is a friendly conspirator conspirator means who plants secretly okay that collaborates with the sun to bring richness ripeness and fullness to the fruit first conspirator then collaborator and then fuller 
Okay, fuller means the one which fulfills something. Secondly, it is a witness who sees the end of ripening and the completion of harvest. First, in the first stage, it talks about it talks uh, about autumn being a conspirator, collaborator, and fuller. In the second step, or you can say in the second stage, it is regarded as a witness. It sees things changing in front of him. Okay, in front of it, not him. <coughs> Excuse me, it. So, third part shows it is represented as a musical, sorry, musician whose plays sweet melodies who plays sweet melodies in the nature when this particular phase comes then autumn season automatically starts singing because new life will be born out of this particular season thus keats glorifies autumn with all its blooms and shows no pain and miseries running in this season we need to understand these points very properly see conspirator conspirator means to plan secretly what does it mean when autumn season comes it secretly plans for the death or the dilapidation of dead plants dead uh, you know dead branches dead bark etc so secretly it is planning to change the entities of nature okay now it collaborates with the sun with the help of sun it gives new life to the things which are already here in this nature okay with the help of sun if we see it scientifically then it will be like providing photosynthesis okay providing light through which plant makes their food okay and with that food they can nourish themselves nourish its branches and then it can reach to fullness it can reach to ripeness and those ripeness will be enjoyed by human beings. When a flower blooms to the fullest, human beings takes it away or plucks it away for, you know, offering to the God. Yes or no? So in the same way, with the help of sun, with the collaboration of sun, autumn season gives a lot of things to nature and through nature we get it. Human beings get it. Okay, not only that, it provides fullness to fruits. Without autumn season, with the collaboration of sunlight, it will not ripe. And fruits will be uneatable by human beings. So, without collaboration of sun, it will happen. But fortunately, in the autumn season, we get to see all these changes. Okay, now, next, witness. Autumn season is personified here because... Seasons cannot see, seasons cannot uh, look after anything, seasons cannot do anything just like a human being. But here personification is used because it can see end of ripening. It can see the end phase or the last phase of ripening because after that there won't be any uh, development in the plant. Okay, because ultimate development will be done in this season and after that there will be another season and that will be for celebrating the death okay celebrating the death decay in nature we should appreciate decay also as i told you because unless and until people go new people cannot come in the same way in the nature when old things dies then only new things can be germinated okay let's move to next point Thus, Keats glorifies autumn with all its bloom and shows no pain and miseries running in this season. Now, see, human. when we connect it with our life, we get to understand that human beings, when they reach to old age, they become very much dismayed, they become very much sad because they are dependent upon others. Okay, but this is not the time to, you know, become disheartened because this season will certainly give something else to celebrate okay it is that is new life however what appeals the reader is the splendid description of autumn and the message that autumn is not always melancholic and also has its own pleasures now description of autumn i told you that during autumn season only 
the last stage of the season starts okay it starts shedding its leaves gradually it becomes yellow first of all and then gradually it uh, gets you know spread to entire uh, body of the tree and then gradually in the next month it sheds in the next season sorry it sheds the leaves okay but it should not be taken as a melancholic or the sadness melancholic means sadness okay in a sad manner it's not gloomy thing because from that leaf the fallen leaf new leaf will generate in that same place okay so therefore autumn is personified here autumn sees everything and autumn is able to experience pain as well and glory as well glory or grandeur as well let's move to literary devices in literary devices i have first point and that is rhetoric questions now rhetoric questions means the questions which we pose to the readers or the audience but not to get the answer okay there are so many questions uh, when we deliver a speech at that time also uh, we ask questions to the audience but not in expectation to get answer from them okay but just to generate their uh, inquisitive question in the mind okay so such kind of questions are used in the poetry keats has posed rhetoric questions in the second and the third stanza to emphasize his point such as where are the songs of a spring okay so through this question he wants readers or the listeners to generate inquisitiveness in their mind okay the poet wants people to give time to the poetry okay so that they can understand nature even they will try to observe things in nature that how nature is working next literary device is imagery obviously imagery the things which we imagine kids imagery evokes the perception of sight hearing smell taste and for instance in the first stanza he uses visual imagery such as thatched eye most cottage trees the granary floor the plum the hazel shields and full grown lamps now here we are made to imagine these things okay through words thatched um, eyes okay and then and then we have most cottage trees okay thatched eyes uh, it means uh, straw or uh, this thing uh, the things which are made up of straw okay most cottage it means the cottage which is full of moss which moss which is grown because of cold weather or damp area okay now granary floor granary means the a uh, place where we uh, keep grains okay plum hazel this is a kind of flower full grown lambs lambs okay the uh, animals young bonds of ship so all these things we can imagine and in order to understand the poetry okay when we read our mind goes to another world you know where we can imagine so many things so through words of keats we are able to imagine all these things all right so this literary device is very powerful one because without imagination we cannot understand any poetry otherwise it will be so plain okay when we are reading something which is related to romantic period automatically nature will be connected okay if it is not taking you to that stage where you are able to connect with the nature then you are reading in vain then you are just reading it for some purpose then you are preparing for some examination when you are reading it wholeheartedly then obviously you will be taken to some other place that is why book readers are not a normal person okay they have a strong bonding with nature they have a strong knowledge over nature and other things as well okay they are able to express them more in a more poetic manner than a normal reader all right okay let's move to olfactory uh, literary devices it means uh, the things which 
are related to smell, sense of smell. There is also olfactory or sense of smell imagery in the second stanza such as fume of poppies and sweet kernel. Okay, so here what we need to understand is that through our smell, the poet wants us to understand many things. Okay, like smell of poppies, uh, flowers, understand until we imagine. Okay, it's a scent. We will not be able to take ourselves to that particular stage. Therefore, olfactory imagery we get here as well. Tactile imagery is used in the last stanza such as clammy shells and clammy shells and we knowing wind. Okay, we knowing wind. It means, okay, let me tell you first of all, uh, uh, what is carnal? Okay, what is carnal? It means center or essence, center point of something, sweet center. And tactile imagery, tactile means sense of touch. By touch also we are able to imagine so many things. Okay, like clammy cells. Clammy means damp, which is cold. Okay, now winnowing wind. It means something which separates grain from the chef. Okay, then personification. I told you personification is there in poetry where autumn is personified. Keat, Keats has used personification in the opening lines of the poem, season of mist and mellow fruitfulness. Then close blossom friend of the maturing sun. So here we find personification because human attributes, human qualities are given to season autumn. He personifies the autumn, season and the sun by calling them friends. Okay, season and sun both are connected in a relationship of friendship. So, this is human thing. Okay, this is human act to become friends and become enemies. So, it is nature which is having this trait through John Keats. That is why it is personification. Now let's move to another poetic device and that is apostrophe or apostrophe. It's pronounced in both the ways. Okay, apostrophe. It means direct address to something which is inanimate. So here the poet has used this device in the twelfth line where it is stated as who hath not seen thee oft amid thy store. In this line Okay, the, the line is this one. In this line, the poet directly addresses the imaginary character autumn. Okay, imaginary character autumn. He calls autumn as a human being. So, this is apostrophe. Symbolism. Keats has used a lot of symbols in the poem, such as autumn symbolizes the woman and the sun symbolically stands for a male without male and female the nature is incomplete you must have heard about yin and yang energy okay why i and yin energy is for female and yang is for male energy okay without male and female energy nature will be incomplete okay this yang energy represents mountain and yin energy represents water Okay, so this is uh, mountain means sun, mountain, okay, all these things. It means warmth. It is related to warmth and it is related to calmness or cool nature. Alright, so without yin and yang energy, the nature is incomplete. So, here also autumn and, just a second, autumn and sun symbolizes male and female in the poetry okay let's move to next po next point similarly gathering swallows symbolizes the end of autumn gathering swallows after swallowing the things gets di gets disappeared right so in the same way autumn season will also end simile kids has used simile in the 19th line and sometimes like a Glenna thou dost keep. 
So, here we find like because of which it is simile. Here, he compares autumn with a person who gathers the remaining food from the field. Now, autumn compares, autumn is compared with a person who gathers remaining food from the field. It means whatever is left out. Okay, whatever is left out in the last, second last season, you can say. In the second last season, maximum accumulation is done, maximum gathering is done. So that they can keep it for the next month where there won't be anything in the nature. Okay. So here we find autumn compared as a compared to a person. Assonance. Assonance means having consonant sound. For example, O sound in among. Sorry, having vowel sound. Okay. For example, O sound in among the river swallows born aloft. So here O sound is repeated. So it is a sonance. Consonance. Consonance is the repetition of consonant sound in the same line such as the sound of T in and touch the subtle planes with rosy hue and S sound in spares the next swath and all its twined flowers. So here we find assonance and consonance. Repetition of vowel sound in the poetic line and repetition of consonant sound in the poetic line. Okay, let's see the highlighters now. In highlighters, the first point is each stanza represents the different stage of autumn that we have discussed. The first stanza unfolds the start of autumn. The second describes the harvest time. And the final stanza gives us a clue about departure of the season. Arrival and then productivity that happens in its phase, okay, which is compared with the harvest. Okay, Let me compare it with a season of human life. When a child is born, then some expectations are created by parents. Okay, when it grows, it achieves, when the child grows, it achieves success, happiness and even family members are happy because of his achievements. Now, after that, what happens is relatives, his fellow mates keep, you know, keeps on disappearing from the world and finally, even he gets de departed. Okay, so in the same way, autumn season also comes it starts and then it gets things okay something like uh, it gives things to nature and human being as i told you and then in the final stanza it departs okay it departs it ends that is what we see it is through the powerful and rich description of all these stages the speaker shows his contentment in life Okay, so comparison is done between human life and nature and the way John Keats explains everything, it is worth listening to because of which we get contentment. Contentment means satisfaction, whatever we have, we should be satisfied in life. Okay, and the same thing happens with autumn season as well. Whatever it has achieved till now, okay, the, the season should also be satisfied and the uh, human being as well that is what we learn from this particular season he knows that fleeting he knows that fleeting time is bringing him close to the end fleeting means the thing which is moving very fast okay which is running very fast now it is bringing him close to end obviously human being takes birth in oh sorry on earth and then how quickly he becomes a child of a later childhood and then it grows to adulthood uh, sorry adolescence and then early adulthood later adulthood and then he becomes old man okay so how quickly time passes that is what poet wants us to compare through autumn season but he remains hopeful and enjoys the beauty of life with true spirit See, death is internal, uh, sorry, integral part of human life 
we cannot say that we are born and we are going to die someday we are going to die someday that is eventuality we know that uh, everybody dies but in this time period how much we can generate for others how much we can give to others that is the true sense of life okay unless and until we think about others our life is vain it is futile it is useless so what we need to do we have taken birth on earth and with our knowledge with our you know um, goodwill with our actions we should be able to benefit others and this will bring glory to us okay and even if we die our name and fame will remain intact right now what we are doing we are learning about john kids even after many decades okay not even decades many centuries right so why it is happening because he has given us something which is productive just like autumn even john kids has given us something productive and that is his poetry is his writings right so he is being remembered so in the same way even human being like us must do something for our nature and society as well there are three stanzas in this poem with 11 lines in each stanza the rhyme scheme of each stanza is a b a b c d e c c c e and rhyme is used to make this stanza melodious now these rhymic words makes the poetry musical i told you that ode ode is a lyrical poem it should have musical effect it should not be like blank verse blank verse will not have such this kind of uh, structure this kind of pattern okay they will be written uh, blank verse will be written in a simple uh, poet uh, sorry uh, in a prose manner which will have something in it the content will remain but it will not create any musical effect whereas in rhymic scheme sorry in uh, ode it will happen okay john keats has used end rhyme in this poem such as in the first and the second line of the first stanza the rhyming words are fullness bless sun and run so these are the words which rhymes with the starting and ending lines it is a type of meter consisting of five ims the meter of the poem is generally iambic pentameter such as among the river swallows born are now see in order to understand this uh, meter you should be understanding the uh, stressed and unstressed syllables okay syllables means the breaking of the sound okay like meter me ter it has two syllables one two okay like here meter we can divide the words into different syllables bless 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 has only one syllable sun has only one syllable fullness has two syllables okay fullness full is stressed and ness is unstressed okay so when we are uttering when we are speaking out these words so the word which is uh, stressed okay and another one is unstressed in this way if it has five pairs then it is called pentameter i am big pentameter stressed unstressed stressed unstressed okay in this way five times if it goes in a line then it becomes i am big pentameter okay so for this we need to have a particular class in some class i will explain it to you okay so by that time please uh, let's focus on this only all right next is to autumn is one of kids most sensual image laden poem that is right unless and until we use our senses to understand the poetry it will lose its identity as a romantic poem okay so lots of sensuous images are written in this poetry and we understand the same it is a sumptuous description of the season of autumn in a three stanza structure each of 11 lines and 
of an ABAB rhyme scheme. The first stanza deals primarily with the atmosphere of autumn, while the second addresses autumn in the style of a female goddess with a trace of the homemaker about her and the third stanza goes back to the beauty of autumn, advising her not to mourn the loss of springtime for there is ample time in autumn. Okay, so here we need to understand that different people will have different approaches to towards seasons. Okay, a home maker, a home maker will see it in a different way. A businessman will see the season in a different way. Students will see it in a different way, whereas a poet will see it in a different way. Okay, so one should not be dismayed that this season is ending and another season is, uh, it will take time in approaching and. Uh, we will lose so many things. We will have to wait for a good time. Okay, so just like that. So what we need to do here is that we need to wait patiently. We need to enjoy all the seasons that are given by God to us. Okay, and we should wait patiently for productivity that happens in different seasons. If we jump to one of the things, one of the uh, seasons, then it won't be sufficient. It won't be justified also because we human beings are made humans to enjoy happiness and sadness we are, have to use all the seasons we have to experience all the seasons of human beings and therefore we are here okay we can just skip any season of our life now let's move to some of the mcqs which are from this particular poetry let's start with question number one who has composed the poem Ode to Autumn? Obviously, answer is Keats. Right? John Keats. Next, question number two. Ode to Autumn is written in October 1819. Option B, September 1819. Option C, November 1819 and December 1819. So, the correct answer is option B, September 1819. Next question is, Ode to Autumn is an epic, an elegy, an ode, option D, a ballad. So, obviously, the answer is an ode, a lyrical poem. Next question number four, in Ode to Autumn, Keats deals with in details, option A, spring season, option B, winter, option C, summer, option D, autumn. Obviously, the answer is autumn. Next question, Ode to Autumn consists of Option A, 4 stanzas. Option B, 3 stanzas. Option C, 5 stanzas. And option D, 6 stanzas. So, it has 3 stanzas. Option B is correct. The theme of autumn is, option A, scarcity. Option B, abundance. Option C, fulfillment and maturity. Option D, none of these. So, here, poet talks about fulfillment and maturity because the, the flowers, the fruits gets to its uh, height okay or you can say maturity is height so it is fulfillment and maturity where the when the nature becomes productive question number seven Keats was dash poet a romantic poet a victorian poet a modern poet none of these obviously he is a second generation of romantic poet question number eight who called ode to autumn Keats? Most satisfying of all the odes. Option A, Dryden. Option B, Coleridge. Option C, Wordsworth. And option D, Arthur Compton Rickett. So, here option D is correct. That is Arthur Compton Rickett. Next. Number 9. Each stanza of Ode to Autumn consists. Option A. 11 lines, option B, 12 lines, option 3, 13 lines and option D, 14 lines. So, option A is correct, that is eight, 11 lines. Question number 10, who has been personified in Ode to Autumn? Option A, Spring, option B, Autumn, option C, Winter and option D, Summer. So, right answer is option B, that is Summer. Next question number 11, John Keats has written the poem, option A, an epitaph, option B, Ode to Autumn, option C, The Soldier, and option D, Fire Him. So, option B is correct, that is Ode to Autumn. Next question is, Autumn is a season of mellow. Option A, No Wind, option B, 
fruitfulness and sorry fruitlessness option c fruitfulness and option d none of these so obviously it is about full uh, fruitfulness so option c is correct next question number 13 autumn starts with the departure of the dash season option a winter option b spring option c rainy option d summer so it is option d summer after summer season we have autumn season Question number 14, Dash Seen was a great lover of nature. Option A, John Keats. Option B, John Dryden, John Dunn. Option B, W. H. Auden. Option D, Walt Whitman. So here option A is correct. That is John Keats Seen was a great lover of nature. Next, question number 15, In Dash, new leaves and fruits come out of trees. Option A, spring. Option B, autumn. Option C, summer. Option D, winter. So, it is option B, autumn. Question number 16. The gath and gathering swallows... Twitter in the skies is taken from option A, snake, option B, the soldier, option C, ode to autumn, option D, and epitha. So, here ode to autumn is the correct answer. By this, we have completed poetry ode to autumn. So, I hope it's clear to everyone. If you have any queries, do let me know. If you have any confusion, do let me know through messages. Till the time we meet in our next video, take care, take care friends and all the very best for your examination. Thank you everyone.